All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I'm. Uh, uh, this is something that we we all have talked about for uh, quite some time. As uh, our, as I say, we're victims of our own success because of the incredible increases in residential property tax. And uh, so, as as we all uh, talk to our Idaho citizens and constituents. Uh, it was obvious that we needed to do some on property tax. And so uh, this year we passed uh, w what is going to be an enduring property tax uh, uh, reduction of $200 million. Uh, part of it was in our Idaho First plan, uh, and, and, and we got there. And, of course, now today we're announcing uh, the fact that uh, we've got a surplus uh, because of the surplus eliminator uh, part that was put in this. And uh, so why do we have a surplus? Uh, well, we have a surplus because we've done the right thing over a long time. And then we, as whether it was federal money that came in or spikes in the economy uh, uh, because of the people moving in here, we didn't grow government at the same rate the revenue was growing. And that's why we've had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back tax decreases. And um, this year, uh, you all know that we had a $100 million uh, surplus, which will go directly to property taxes. And, and that means total with the 200, uh, there'll be $300 million in property tax, which, uh, yeah, they got the right number of zeros on there. I was just checking to make sure the right number of zeros. Uh, and, but that will not show up in, uh, in uh, Idaho citizens' uh, pockets until they get their tax bills. Uh, they'll get the bills in November and pay the first half of December. And so uh, that, will, that will make a big difference in, in Idahoans. But you, you got to remember that's on top of $2.7 billion uh, that we've already accomplished in property tax relief, whether it's our new flat income tax, enhanced grocery tax credit, or payroll taxes. Uh, Idaho has the distinction uh, of delivering more property tax uh, relief per capita uh, than any state in the nation. And so we're, we're excited about that. Uh, you know, the, the success we have in Idaho is, uh, is pretty unique. Uh, whether what, what I see is the fact that we've diversified the economy. We had, a, we had an economy that was built on our traditional industries of agriculture, mining, timber, food processing. Uh, but in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, we've really diversified the economy. And that means uh, the amount of tax revenue is coming in. But I want to contrast where we are in Idaho uh, with where the federal government is. Federal government continues to be buried uh, in deeper and deeper debt. Uh, in Washington, D.C., they spend money they don't have, uh, where we give money back to the, uh, to the hardworking taxpayers in Idaho. Uh, every year, Washington, D.C. ends up in the red. Every year, we have a surplus. Uh, and granted, we've got a constitutional provision about surpluses, but so do most states. But they've got gimmicks in other states uh, that that they don't comply with it like we do here in Idaho. And that's a result of not only the current legislature, but previous legislators and what we've done uh, to set the state up for success. We're providing historic tax relief. At the same time, we're making strategic and significant investments in, in schools, in water, in roads, in transportation, and in infrastructure. So you know, simple part of what we're doing in Idaho is working. Uh, we don't, it's common kitchen table economics. We don't spend what we don't have. We rein in government spending uh, and, and the impacts of our investments are starting to show up. Uh, our rainy day funds are, are very robust. So if something happens, uh, the economists, it seems like they change every two weeks about whether we're gonna have a recession or not. Regardless, we're going to be better off. I will tell you that some of the states that had big surpluses kind of as the pandemic ran out uh, and were announced big surpluses in 
in a year, California went from a record surplus uh, to having to cut spending and do a lot of the things. That is not happening in Idaho uh, because of what we've done. And so I'm, I'm pleased with where we are. I want to thank uh, my legislative partners on, on what we've done and what we've worked together. Uh, we've, we're just looking uh, at the very uh, top line issues about where we're going to be next year. I anticipate uh, with our partners, we'll look at what we've done before and what we'll do in the future. Uh, but all the programs we started will be able to continue. Uh, there's no reason to think that uh, we're going to be in a position, given our rainy day fund and given the, the dynamic and the growth in the economy, that we'll be able to continue uh, so that the people of Idaho can continue to uh, have prosperous lives and uh, that, that are, where do they go? In Cyber School. Where, where'd my props go, <laughs> those kids that were here? Uh, uh, so that they'll be able to choose to stay here and, uh, and raise their families here in Idaho. So with that, we'll take your questions. I'll start. Uh, and I don't know if this is for the legislators. Uh, if it's a hard question, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we do, aside from the property tax relief, we do have a tremendous uh, surplus. Are there plans for it, things that you'd like to see the next legislative session? Well, we don't have as big a surplus as we would have because uh, this number right here. So, Or compared to... Uh, compared to what we had the last two years. Yeah, it's, it's, we, we've used it for roads and everything else, so it's, it's not what it was. The one thing that we're on our second year of uh, making money available to address our backlog and bridges, and and I, I think we've all made the commitment that uh, we did a third last year, we're doing a third this year. I would anticipate, but mm. we haven't made, and we do these things in conjunction, that we'll probably do the the last third of the of the uh, deficiencies in the bridge areas uh, all over the state of Idaho. I, I think we're always going to try to reduce the tax burden for Idaho every year, um, regardless of what the numbers look like. We're going to try, um, uh, and we'll work together with the, the House, the Senate, and the Governor, and we'll come up with a good plan to, to come up with the best package we can for our citizens here. We're talking about property tax, though. I think it's really incumbent on you as reporters and for the public to understand the state of Idaho collects no property taxes and the state of Idaho spends no property taxes. That's all done at the local level. And in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see all these budget hearings by these locally elected officials setting those budgets. And if they are not careful with their budget decisions, they can suck up a lot of that that the taxpayers won't see. So I, if you saw your tax assessment notices this year, they gave you a number and a date when those hearings were going to happen. And I would encourage people to get there because we don't collect them, we don't spend them. Those are all locally made decisions. And of the things we've done, the, the money we've made available to uh, municipalities for sewer systems, for water systems, what we've done for schools, what we've done in, in, in uh, are we uh, are we in Nampa or uh, Nampa. yeah we're in the Nampa school district? Your district, uh, ten, the best uh, district in the state. I know it's in the best <laughs> district in the state, but uh, uh, but the money that we the, the money that we made available for health insurance, uh, that was one of the issues that all the school districts were wrestling with, and we did that uniformly across the state. So in essence, that could be viewed as property taxes because a lot of the supplemental levies that were all over the state was a result of. Uh, of we needed to do it for school safety, we needed to do it for technology, we needed to do it for insurance. We put money into every one of those pots. And then also what we've done on teacher pay, it's not as critical right here as it is in say, uh, Lewiston, where they've got Clarkston, Moscow, where they've got Pullman, Coeur d'Alene, where they've got Spokane. But for a competitiveness, what we've done in teacher pay means that the property taxpayers aren't, don't, don't have the the urgency of competitive teacher pay. I just reviewed some numbers this week, and our enrollment in our teacher colleges over the last two years is up over 40%. We are sending the message to our best and brightest to be in the teaching profession here in Idaho, and I think that's what we all want. So. Yeah, Joe. Uh, Three hundred million dollars sounds like a lot of money. Are you able to quantify what that means to individual Idahoans? <laughs> I, before Mike runs over the top of me, uh, <laughs> it depends upon your taxing history. He made the point about it. It it, it depends upon 
where uh, what your taxing district and it also depends upon what happened if you're in a community where they just put up a big industrial uh, a new industrial facility that means your taxes are going to go uh, lower if you're in a in a community or a taxing district uh, where there's a bunch of new houses uh, it, it means it's going to go lower it's all relative to the taxing district you're in what taxes you're to what uh, levies and bonds, new ones are coming on and what old ones are going off. I live in Emmett. We have the lowest school property taxes, uh, I think, in the state in Emmett right now. So good for you. We do have a, there is a calculator just to answer your question um, that, that I know we put together at the LSO that will go through if you wanted to put in your specific information and you can pop out and see what you would uh, expect to see but again as, as speaker moyle brought up that assumes that the locals uh don't raise taxes significantly between now and then um, if they raise that their budgets up significantly they're going to eat up a lot of that uh, relief that we just provided um, but but there is some of those tools available for you that we can probably try to get it's, that access for you but the short answer is not easy it's 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 germane to the taxing districts the year in and what's happened to the values uh, the 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 assessors are supposed to update those values all the time and occasionally you'll be trapped in taxing district where they've gotten behind and and you might be in the uh, uh, Samantha's house um, might be at market value and the assessor may not have assessed that house over there and and until they equalize what is a three-year, five-year five rolling basis. Uh, sometimes you'll be a victim of the reassessment, but obviously you can't assess the value of every parcel every year. But it's really been a problem in this economy where we've had the fastest growing residential uh, value increases of any any state. And you've seen that soften the last year, especially like in Ada and Canyon where the values have tipped back down. Well, and that, actually, that will... actually, Ada, had gone down and that's gone back up, but Canyon is down is down so. Yeah. But it's still budget driven, right? Property right. taxes are all budget driven. And so those hearings to set those budgets, most of them happen in August. And I encourage people to get to those hearings because if they raise those budgets, some of your relief will go away. Yeah, so we did some snapshot, you know, checking to see what different scenarios might be in different counties and whatnot. And a lot of the numbers come back. The estimated what we're figuring is hopefully around 10 to 13 um, percent. But there is, like what was mentioned, a variation on that. So we're hoping that that comes true. And we're hoping that cities and counties don't raise their budgets and s consume all that over the next few years as well. And just so you know, we reached out the controller and told him that I'm going to be signing a check that it <laughs> He's already got covered. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's a good stuff. <laughs> All right. You want me to do this here? Sure. My penmanship's not very good on standing up. Yeah. Don't tell my Benjamin, my penmanship instructor from grade school, how bad my penmanship is. <laughs>